much for joining us today. I'm actually really excited. I've watched a few of your videos on LinkedIn, so it's <laughs> really exciting to get you on. Um, to kick it off, as you know, I ask every guest the same question to start off with. So if you were in charge of changing the world um, and you wanted to inspire change through the people that you had on your team, what three people would you choose to do it with? So I find this question very difficult. I've pondered it now for a couple of weeks. But the first person on my list was absolutely Michelle Obama. Okay, yes. Because I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I just love her. And um, yeah. I read her book last year yeah. and it made me take action. Mm -hmm. So I just, I think she would just be such an incredible person. And she's not, she's not a politician, but she sort of understands the political landscape. Yeah, so, um and she's just an incredibly strong woman. So Michelle yeah. Obama, number one. Number two, I feel absolutely has to be my husband. So okay. um, he gets on at me because he thinks that I never talk about him as if he doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> like in my professional life. But actually he's, he is just so good at like keeping me level, you know? So if I've like had a bad day, you won't let me wallow for too long. And like, you know, if I'm, if you know, I want to go for something, he's like just dead good at pushing me to, to do more. So I think, um, I think if anybody's going to change the world, you have to have him on your team. He's just like yeah. super smart and uh, very diplomatic. So yeah, he would be my second person. Amazing. And then third, I, so I kind of went back and forward on this and I thought it would maybe have to be Barack Obama because okay. that would be like have a double power. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have that yeah, be 50 50-50, gender diverse. And then yeah. I was like, oh, actually, no. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I think now it would have to be Reese Witherspoon because okay, I just yeah. love her. I, I think really she's... Like yeah she's like she's just so friendly and I think I think she's really underestimated yeah. as you know as a woman like she's just I don't I just think she's an amazing like businesswoman and just yeah. you know she's a mum and I think she's incredible but I think she's underestimated so I think that team would have sort of power and likability yeah, and right, yeah. you know could really like get people on board and then Callum yeah. would be there to sort of like keep us all level <laughs> and <laughs> bring us down to earth when needed. That sounds like a good theme. I feel like I do agree with Reese Witherspoon. She plays these such like feisty characters and I always yeah. sort of think that she is like that in real life as well so I hope that yeah. she would be because I feel like her characters that she plays in like Big Little Lies for example I love oh, the character that she yes. plays um, so no, I think so good. I think it's a really good team it would have been funny to have two couples though I think two married couples <laughs> uh, working on couples, so I know it would be very <laughs> strange so what would you actually change about the industry what would be the first thing that you would change if you had this team behind you oh goodness when I when I first started out and I'd been to sort of these women in tech groups and I'd heard about sort of unconscious bias and yeah. and the glass ceiling and all this stuff and I was just so lucky in my career never really to have experienced any of that yeah. um before I moved into management and then when mm -hmm. I got into management it really really changed for me and it you know it was awful at times <laughs> So I think, um, you know, I think as an industry behave towards you or the way that yeah, yeah, kind of just like structured. Yeah, just like coming up against boys clubs that you're trying to sort of, you know, just do your job and they're just sort of pushing against you yeah. and and it's just a, you know, a real uphill battle, um, and then just like poor attitudes and mm. poor behaviour. Um, and 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 I feel it's just a real shame because I had started thinking actually no this is a, you know it's a great industry and it's so inclusive and people are so friendly and supportive but it's like when you when you sort of move up and you get into management you're then alone so yeah. I think um, I think I would definitely try and put more support in for women who have 
you know, moved up into management and are, are sitting in those senior leadership teams because I think there's so much support for that grassroots level yeah. and people who are coming in and then it's sort of, you're sort of on your own. Oh, that's what it felt like for me. So I would, I would change that. But I also think we've, we've put so much emphasis on the sort of recruitment processes and, you know, getting lots of people in but actually the environments that we're working in are sometimes not that they've not really kept up yeah with you know what what's being displayed outside in companies so yeah there's 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 a lot of good and there's lots of lovely really supportive people that have helped yeah. me through my career but there's you know equally a lot of people who have not made it great yeah and do you think this change needs to come from the top from the businesses to try and give this level of support at that level of seniority or do you think it needs to co come from the bottom as people sort of move in and have that sort of consciousness yeah. about them yeah I think it's got to be from the bottom because you know when you look at strategies and and goals at that top level it's all about you know having an inclusive environment and being you know we're all getting unconscious bias training and we're you know we're doing this and that but on the ground it's not it's not filtering down at yeah. all levels yeah. um and I think I think it is you know people who are coming into the industry um and you know those sort of student levels I guess have to want to have you know a diverse team diversity of yeah. thought not just gender diversity but you know diversity of all of all kinds and sort of foster that yeah. inclusive environment yeah um, yeah yeah and not all organizations are like that either you know there's just certain ones and some people yeah. go through their career never experiencing yeah. sort of really bad you know bad attitudes and things um, yeah yeah, I think that's been a common theme across these interviews. I think it always sort of comes back to that support at management and the behaviour of the, the people around them. And then it sort yeah. of sparks that it needs to be a conversation that everyone's having to kind of align, you know, it all together. And I, I know that on LinkedIn, you speak a lot about um, kind of burning out in the industry and having to take mm -hmm. time to sell. And obviously at the moment, I feel like, with COVID happening and that people are working from home, do you think that people will burn out quicker or do you think this is actually going to be a good change for that? Because mm, that's interesting. I think it I think it will depend. Um it will depend on each person and what their routine is because yeah. so I personally did find that the journey at the end of the day home although I hated it and the train was always packed yeah. it did give you that time to switch off from yeah, work and then you're going oh well, yeah yeah you're going back to your home um and that's your sort of like you know your tranquil place but but yeah I think I think there is a risk of people um although they are at home you know their life becoming more sort of the lines being blurred I think that was happening anyway with yeah. having like yammer and and uh, yammer on your phone and your email and you know linkedin and things mm. it, the, the lines were blurred but i think um it really depends on how if you are sort of keeping your days that you're starting at a certain time and you make sure you're finishing at a certain yeah. time you're taking your lunch um and then you know like after work i've started going out for a run or something to, yeah so I, because i've not got that break yeah where yeah. i'm leaving yeah. work yeah, yeah. So there's just something else to sort of break break the day and then also just making sure you take time off so obviously they can't really do anything right now I know. but it's still important yeah you, know, you can't really go in your halls but it's important to still take some time to yourself you know do one of your hobbies go out for a walk you know like or okay, go and see your family if you can um but i think it's important to still take your holidays yeah definitely i think it's also important that organizations like sort of push people to do this as well yes. from their point of view it's obviously good for them that people aren't really taking their holidays because there's nothing to do and you know if people are working longer days it's beneficial for them but I think they need to kind of be open and honest and say it's not actually good for the individual so yeah. it's obviously a yeah. balance from what you as an individual want to do and how you want to break it up but I think there's so much I think you know organizations should put that kind of message out yeah. there also not healthy yeah 
Yes. Absolutely. Because yeah. I think as well, some people just carry it over till next year and then there'll be huge chunks yeah, of people exactly. being out. Yeah. <laughs> but it isn't going to make sense next no. year. No, but it's really productive for next year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. no. And if you could um, go back in time and speak to your younger self who's just starting mm-hmm. off in the industry, what would you say mm-hmm. to yourself? Um, so I would. I have I have said this at sort of career talks that I've done, but I I feel like I would just tell myself that you deserve the seat at the table that you've got, yeah. and not you know and you belong where you are, not yeah. make anybody feel you don't, um or that you know you're not you know you're the imposter you know in the room. Yeah, I you know, I just I have suffered from that a lot, and I think I think everybody does at some point. So. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I would go back and just tell myself, you know, I've worked hard. I've always worked hard to, you know, to do whatever I'm doing. Um, and, you know, there's lots of people that will try and make you feel that, you know, that they're better than you or that, you know, you're not good enough. And it's just important to brush that off as mm-hmm. hard as it can be. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what I would tell myself. And I do tell young women that I speak to, um, you know, as they're starting out in their career to remember that, you've worked to be here yeah so it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks yeah I think imposter syndrome is such a huge thing and it's come up quite a lot in these interviews that I've done but also like conversations that I have with my friends as well I just feel like yeah it's something that especially young women feel at some point in their career and I don't know whether it's down to being a woman or just being younger than some of your kind of colleagues that are in the same position of you but yeah. I think it's definitely a thing it's something that I feel quite a lot I'm like oh my god how have I oh. even here I don't know what I'm doing like yeah. um, <laughs> like seeking yourself out or or yeah. just like not going for opportunities yeah. as well yeah like, that's something that you know it's like in your head you're panicking but you you know you've got that swan like yeah. um, appearance but then you know that's not okay but you know you're managing it but if it, yeah, if it stops you going for different roles or opportunities, then um, then that's definitely you know hindering you, which you shouldn't you shouldn't let that happen. Especially you know if you can, if you feel actually you've trained and you've worked hard and you deserve an opportunity. Yeah. Um, but just not let that doubt put you off. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a big thing. And is there a defining moment in your career where you thought, right, this is a moment of change or a moment that you'd been thinking about for a while and it finally happened and you were like, right, this all feels worth it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like I've had a couple actually in the last <laughs> few years. <laughs> but it is a defining moment. It's not like a single defining. But yeah, so um, when I first moved into Education Scotland, I was sort of like 18 months at uni and I got offered this incredible job as the head of information security. And I was just like, uh, you know, the imposter. I'd been through so many rounds of interviews. So they obviously thought I could do it, but I was like, have they got this wrong? Are they (laughs) sure this is, I'm the person that's meant to be doing this job. And, um, And it was a big step up for me and it was, it was, a lot to learn and it was that way where I was either going to sink or swim yeah but I you know I loved the challenge I absolutely loved the challenge of just sort of learning how to operate at that level um and um just putting a face on the huge imposter that I felt I was um but then that was also my first experience of um being in management and sort of really dealing with quite difficult personalities so so that Mm -hmm. you know had to sort of find my voice and really be brave in in that role at times so I think that definitely was a defining moment and it was also it was one of those sort of goals that I'd set myself for like a few years ahead and I was achieving it early so for me that you know it was a big deal Mm -hmm. um but then my other defining moment was when I just I had quite a strict career plan and and then last year I just chucked it and I, I just had enough I'd yeah. had enough of the industry and sort of furiously climbing this ladder and I was sort of questioning why you know why was I doing this anyway you know what was the point and um and then that's when I went out on my own and <clears throat> and started my company so I think that again has just been 
I'm real whirlwinds because I've had to learn so much just about stuff yeah. you know, like accounting and how on earth do you even run a company? <laughs> it's like, I didn't have a clue. So yeah. this year I've been really sort of finding my feet and working out what, you know, what's my plan now? Because yeah. the plan I've had for so long is, is gone. Um, so when, I think there's did two. you make that career plan? So I made that career plan while I was studying. So when I was doing my degree in ethical hacking, I had this plan that I wanted to, you know, earn a certain amount by the time I was 25. And then I wanted to be a CISO by the time I was 30. It was like <laughs> this, I don't know why, but it was just like this thing that I wanted. And and I was just climbing and climbing yeah. the ladder and just working so hard. And the last year, I was really not far off that yes. at all. But, and I, I think if I had stayed, I probably would have achieved that by the time I was 30. Mm. Well, I'm not 30 yet. So I've, I've still got time <laughs> if I want to do it. But yeah. I'm kind of just like, like, I don't, I, I think maybe it was just in the career setting that I was in before. I, I just thought, actually, no, this isn't this isn't for me mm. like right now. I can be a CISO at some point, but for me right now, this isn't this isn't what I want. This isn't an environment that I want to be working in. That's interesting. Yeah. I feel like I know that when I was studying, I sort of had this career plan, and then the minute I left university, I was like, it just didn't go to plan at all. So I was like, right, well, that's that gone. So I feel like, yeah. do you think it's just the not the naivety, but maybe just the slight ignorance of being young and it's still in education, you're still kind of institutionalized. You don't actually yeah. understand the difficulty once you're out of that. Yeah, yeah, I think I definitely started out quite naive and just mm -hmm. what I thought the industry was like to work in and and you know, how that path would, yeah. would go and, you know, and I didn't have like a, I guess a strict plan of exactly how I was going to get there. It was just that sort of goal in my head. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. But I, I think I definitely have been naive and um, sort of looking at th things with rose tinted glasses, but they have absolutely been taken off. <laughs> so, because right, um, so, you kind of go into things not really overthinking it if you're quite naive, because I think sometimes yeah. if you actually knew more information you probably wouldn't go into it so I think sometimes yeah. ignorance is bliss um, yeah, oh, and it's is quite helpful so I mean it got you to where you are now so it was obviously a very yeah. good plan <laughs> <laughs> and if I was to ask you who the single most extraordinary person to have inspired change in your life is who would you say <laughs> I find I find that's quite difficult um because there's been lots of different people as you know, depending on what your goals are and yeah. where you're at in your life. Um, you know, like for example, I read Michelle Obama's book last year when I was on holiday. And after I was finished it, I was like, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> so <laughs> I just like <laughs> it just spurred me on to like yeah. do what I had been thinking about for yeah. a long time. Um, but I, but no, the most you know, the consistent not person but people in my life have been my family yeah. and I know everybody says that but you know they they are and I'm, I've just had I've got such a supportive family I've got three siblings who you know I know are like incredibly proud of what I've done and, yeah. and are always there if, you know if I need to speak to them and then there's my mom and dad and I'm, I've also got an uncle who's like my second dad and we're wow. really close and I've he's just always been there my entire life and you know, at like competitions, you know, we've we done judo a lot. When we were <laughs> so, you know, like we'd be driving all over yeah, Scotland yeah. going to these competitions and, and wow. he was always there. Yeah, so he, you know, I think I'm, I'm just so fortunate to have such a big family network. Yeah. And they're all people who, you know, they're all hardworking people and, and you know, just spur you to, to achieve more all the time. Yeah. So, Yes, I haven't really answered that question. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not a collective single person. It's a collective. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's collective a, lot, a lot of people do say they're family, but I guess it just shows the importance of 
having that yeah. consistency like you said and also yeah. just having it ingrained from such a young age um i think yeah it's-